Hi everyone, it's Carol Clark here and I am so excited to talk to you today about organic reach on social media simplified and we are bringing to this to you courtesy of HealthWise. I want to thank them for this three-part series. This is actually the third week in a row we've had a webinar. The first one is, was on how to build a successful weight loss practice and the second one was on effective strategies for doubling your nutrition sales. So I hope you found those helpful. If someone could just indicate whether or not you can hear me, just to make sure, just type a little yes in there. If you want to share where you're from or anything about yourself, that would be great. Okay, thanks, Dawn. So you can hear me. We're really big on trying to stay on time. We know your time is valuable. So our other commitment is to keep this to 30 minutes plus questions and answers. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we, we try to, to do that as well. This is such a, I know it's a, a lot of people have sort of a love-hate relationship with organic marketing. It's something that I just really love talking about. Our team and I just love trying to figure everything out and then bring the best practices to you. So as I mentioned, this is the last in a series of three webinars, one of my favorite topics. And uh, even though the rules change I like a challenge and uh, oh great from Florida I like a challenge and probably a lot of you do as well so it can be frustrating but once you figure organic reach how to get organic reach it's pretty exciting because it just ends up snowballing into a bigger thing and we're going to get into a bit about that today so we're going to try to keep it uh, real simple for you and these are tactics that um, we use every single day so let's go ahead and get started and uh, appreciate everybody for taking time out to be with us today. Our goal today, of course, just like with the other webinars, is to really provide you with information you can use today so that you can leave the webinar and you can actually go implement tactics right away. Uh, I do, I hope, I know my voice is a little bit uh, part maybe muffled a little bit. I have a little bit of a cold, so I apologize in advance about that. But our goal today is really to provide you with some tools that you can use today, start using it today, and try to accomplish that in 30 minutes, which is going to be hard for me because I could talk on and on about this particular topic. What I'm going to cover today is really the realities of today, which you're probably living every single day of your, li of your life in your business, uh, what your marketing goal should be, what the four primary tools of the trade are for organic marketing, the three primary types of assets that you need to be creating, and then a four-step simplified organic reach process so that you can get those assets out there and build traffic into your business. I also end with some tips for success, and then I always like to add a few bonus ideas for those that are up for them. I'm not sure if everyone here was on the past couple weeks, but you might be wondering who's Carol Clark and why should I listen to anything she has to say. I'm actually in the trenches, just like you, in business. I'm here in Virginia, Newport News, Virginia, and our team here, we all run a 10,000 square foot uh, surgical, non-surgical uh, weight loss facility called Center for Weight Loss Success. And we also have a very robust retail store here. We've built it over years of, of putting that together. And I've had people come and want to duplicate this. And so it urged me to start Weight Loss Practice Builder and help people do that very same thing. I also love making things simple for practices and also um, getting the information out there in a bigger way. So I've written, these are five of my six best-selling books. Uh, the top two relate specifically to medical and surgical weight loss practices. One is about publishing and then the other two are really about marketing. Marketing is one of those things that you may think, she's a nurse, how does she even know anything about that? And that's a good question. And the, all my knowledge is a lot of training and then also education and also uh, putting it to work every day in our practice. So figuring that out has been uh, one of those things. My frustration earlier on was that, um, was that, that there was practices, or we were we were actually paying for things that ended up not even um, being. Uh, we ended up having uh, paying for things that was not showing a return on investment, and that drives me just about crazy, and I'm sure it drives you crazy as well. So, what are some of the realities of marketing? You're living this every single day, just like I am. It's really noisy out there. This 
slide shows just how crazy it is out there. There's stiff competition within your area and then also just from across the US and even the world because the reality is you can market to people in so many different ways and in many different areas. We find patients actually traveling here for weight loss surgery and you've got large corporations that are competing for the same clients that you're trying to serve in your own niche in your own area of the world. And you're oftentimes competing with people who have very deep pockets. I know not too long ago, I was on a stage where we were talking about marketing and the uh, respectable surgeon, I respect him a great deal, who was next to me, he had a $1.5 million marketing budget, which good for him, that is awesome. And he was utilizing that and really growing. But the reality is most of us out there don't have a $1.5 million marketing budget. So the things I'm going to talk to you today are not the things that cost you an arm and a leg. And I don't know if you ever felt like this, but it can be so confusing. You feel like you're in a tornado of social media. It's everywhere. What, what do I do? How do I market best? How can I use my dollars to the, to the best uh, effect for my business? But the reality is that greater than 80% of shoppers or buyers do their online research before they actually buy. And this includes healthcare services. So your reputation, your presence online cannot be ignored. And you probably think about it yourself. I mean, don't you do a lot of research online before you buy? I know I do. I, the only person I know that doesn't is perhaps my mom was in her 80s and has no interest in it. So you really have to look at that at that and online, especially for weight loss, it's critical. The other thing is 90% of business to consumer, which is what most of, these of, of us are, businesses report social media as the most effective content marketing tactic. And we're gonna get into what exactly content marketing is, but it's a really effective way to attract the, your ideal patients and also to build a relationship with them. You live these realities of business and patient acquisition every day, just like I do. As I mentioned, it's noisy and confusing out there. As a small business owner or entrepreneur, you probably know if you've been out there that there are a lot of bright, shiny objects, people who are promising you the world and delivering really, in, in a lot of cases, zero. So you can spend a lot of money on bright, shiny objects objects and when I consult with um, practices I see this all the time they're investing in really big uh, marketing efforts and they have no idea if they're getting a good return on investment or they start something they invest a lot of money in it and just when it should turn around which oftentimes happens with organic marketing they decide to stop that effort and they never really finish building that bridge to get them to the other side so there's a lot of expensive promises out there and you need marketing to promote your brand. Really, I've said this on previous webinars, but your brand is your reputation. So you can control that and you can promote that online. And what we're going to talk about today will get, help you do that. I want you to do whatever works for you. Obviously, we all have, everyone has different budgets. Uh, but the reality is for a lot of practices, what I see out there is that they're experiencing lower reimbursement rates. There's ever-changing referral patterns and it creates a lot of havoc in terms of the old uh, marketing tactics and the old referral patterns that we had in place are just not working today. So how do you ensure your piece of the pie without breaking the bank? Because you really can't afford to continue being the best kept secret in town. Doesn't that frustrate you? You know you provide awesome services. You know you have patients who have outstanding outcomes. You know you do great things and you just, for whatever reason, can't seem to get in front of your ideal patients to come to you for your services. It can be so frustrating and sometimes we'll take one step that forward and two steps back, but you really can't afford, like I say, to continue being the best kept secret in town. There's a variety of things out there. We're not gonna focus on paid versus organic marketing. Um, you know this already. Traditional paid marketing includes all those things like your print advertising, broadcast in the form of TV and radio, uh, telephone marketers, outdoor like billboards, that sort of thing. Those are really pricey. That's a lot of the traditional thing that we used to have to use. 
And even online, there's paid versus organic. So on, on, well, online, the paid is more your pay-per-click, online ads, and I see practices spending a fortune on these, like I say, with no idea as to whether or not they're getting a return on investment. Because for me, I don't care about how many clicks I have or how many impressions I have. All I care about is did I have new people either coming through my door or purchasing some of my online programs? Did I actually see a return in terms of my revenue. That's how I like to measure my return on investment. Organic marketing is that niche marketing. It's the great thing, some of the great things about organic marketing, which is really reaching people online without having an ad spend, without paying for ads to attract them. The great thing about it is that you can do some serious niche marketing. What is it that makes you really, really special? you're able to also really drill down into who are your ideal clients. Think in your head about who, what one of your clients do you just love working with and you wish you had a whole bunch more of them. Who is that ideal person? How can you interact with them? Um, you can interact with them, you can figure out where it is they hang out online and then you can reach out to them directly. You can actually build relationships. Here when people come in, they almost feel like they know us already because they've seen us in videos, they've seen testimonials from our patients who share our brand and what we stand for. It's obviously less costly, you control the timing, you control when uh, posts are going out there and that sort of thing and it's also a lot more fun if you let it be. Just as an example, here specific to our weight loss surgery patients, in 2016, we do online webinars and we also do on-site seminars to introduce people into weight loss surgery. In 2016, about 30% of our surgeries came from those that viewed an online webinar, 70% from those that come into our practice. And obviously, if you're a bariatric surgeon or bariatric practice watching this, you do prefer, you want them to come into your practice because that's when they can really understand what you're about and the unique services that you offer and the unique way that you offer them. In 2019, so right now, we actually are seeing that it's flipped over to about 50-50. So online, if you're not online and you're not organically seeking patients, you're missing out on a lot. And the cool thing is that organic marketing actually levels the playing field. Don't you love that? It actually takes you and allows you to reach your clients without having to compete with all the huge organizations out there uh, because you can actually, like I say, reach those people equally as, as, as well as they can and often in a more desirable way because people tend to trust organic or non-paid advertising on on line versus those paid ads. I mean, think about it. when you go to a Google search, where do you look first? You look at the ones that are paid or do you look at the ones underneath that are more organic? That's where the, that's where the true money is and that's where we want to help you get to. Like I say, organic reach has a higher trust factor. People just tend to trust organic listings when they're doing a search versus those that are paid advertising. So what's your overall goal? I'm not going to belabor this. We've talked about it in some previous uh, webinars, but your goal is really to attract the right patients, the ones you love working with, to build a relationship with them, to convert them to a sale of your services or products, to have them become raving fans. They just love you. They can't wait to tell other people about you so that they refer other people to you. And you just continue this whole cycle. Our webinar today really folks on focuses on the attraction and the building relationship and converting to sales. So sort of those three aspects of it, not the other two, which could be a whole nother topic. This is what we're going for. We want to get, this is called the three map ranking. And so I just put in a, you can see my search here, weight loss surgery, Hampton Roads. If I put in weight loss surgery, Newport News, I can just about guarantee you we would be the top two, but I wanted to see I wanted you to see how when people, you put in what people are searching for, and oftentimes when you're wondering like, what are the keywords? What are people searching for? Oftentimes you can just put in a couple words up there and Google will fill it in for you because that's what people are looking for. So we show up first here and the couple of really important things here, you wanna show up first, you wanna show up in one or two or all three of them if you can, and you wanna make sure that you have great ratings out there five-star ratings. So you want to make sure that you've got great ratings out there. We're going to get into a little bit more about that. 
And here's just an example of a search that I did and I went into videos. And you can significantly impact the search ranking. So here it is. These are videos look, uh, of us. Some of them are back from 2015, but we have every top spot here with the exception of one in organic searches under video. And how does that happen? That's what we're going to go through today. So let's get right to it. This is a can be kind of a confusing slide. I don't want you to get too caught up in it, but what we want to do is people have different words for it. I would just say you everywhere, you everywhere now. What we want to get you out there everywhere, as many places as you, as you can. And you do this by creating multiple assets that are linked to keywords that people are searching for. You make sure that your um, if you look at that three map ranking, we talked about having content out there, but really the way to get into that three map ranking, you will prevent yourself from being in there if your online citations are incorrect. And so what I mean by your online citations, you or someone in your practice who has some patience, <laughs> we have someone here, her name is Dawn, she does it, uh, but you have to go out there and you have to make sure, especially when you have a change in location or adding positions or change in your name or change in websites, you need to make sure that all of the search engines have all of your content correct and that they have your uh, link, your, all the links are correct. You go in there and you have to actually physically go in there and make sure that your citations are correct. If your citations are incorrect, it's confusing to the search engine, and you will not show up in that three map ranking, which is where that sweet spot is that you want to be. So those online citations are really, really critical. And then the other thing, like I say, is how to create these assets that are gonna be out there and impacting the search engine so that you can get top ranking. So, when I talk about assets, assets are something that will last for you a long time to come. You saw back there in the top rankings, some of the rankings were for things that we created years ago. And those things just don't go away on the internet. They're there. So if you create your assets properly and if you utilize proper keywords and nowadays hashtags as well, and you have them out there so that they're accessible, you will actually see positive response from your organic efforts for a long time to come. Isn't that awesome? So your paid advertising, you see results then. As soon as you turn off that uh, faucet of money, as soon as you turn off your bank account funding that, it tends to sort of dry up and go away, especially if you're trusting a third party because they can basically take your assets down, they're not out there, they're not driving traffic to it, so it's one of those things. But all you need really is your cell phone anymore. Cell phones are awesome, they do great sound, they do great pictures, great video, or if you wanna use a camera like we all did in the old days, you can do that too. The second thing you need is your knowledge and creativity and consistency. This is something that does require consistency. The third thing is that you need uh, access to the internet and social media accounts, you need to create those, and you don't need to go hog wild, especially if you're starting this out from scratch at the beginning. And then you need your product. Your product is what is it that you're selling? What is it that you're trying to try? Is it, is it what services are you trying to attract people to? What products are you trying to attract them to? So as long as you have a cell phone, your brain, access to the internet, and your what you sell, you are set for organic reach. It's it's awesome. It's one of the simplest things. And so often we take simple things like this and we make it super difficult and confusing. And that's what we don't want to do. We talked about assets and there's three primary types of assets. One is video and audio. So videos you can put out there on your YouTube channel. Um, you can do um, vlogs, uh, VLOG, which is like a video blog. You can do podcasts with your audio. You can do video and audio is one type of asset. You put that out there. If you look at, and I'm not, not to promote, but if you look at Center for Weight Loss Success, CFWLS.com, and you just look in the top area where it has social media icons, if you go to our YouTube channel, I mean, there are literally hundreds of videos out there, and they all keep attracting patients. You want If you go to our Facebook page and join in, you'll see how the, the uh, posts 
actually impact that. If you go to our podcast, you'll see Dr. Clark has two podcasts, or Tom has two podcasts, surgical and non-surgical, drawing patients all the time. If you look at the blog, you'll see that too. And the great thing about it is you can create one asset, such as recording a video, and you can then transcribe that. You can turn that one video into numerous assets out there. It can turn into your blog, it can turn into a podcast, it can turn into a, a free giveaway uh, for tips for success, it can turn into a book for goodness sakes. So you um, start with, a, you can have a video, you can also have a blog or an article or a lead magnet that you've created and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then the third primary type of asset is just a graphic. And you need to be consistent and you need to, to encourage engagement. I recommend these need be educational. So you don't want to just create things that are all about you, all about me. People don't really want to hear about you. What they want to hear about is what are you going to do for them? So you want to promote the shade versus the tree. So what's the benefit to them? So all of your assets as you're creating them, keep them in the back of your mind. So those are the primary different types of, of assets that you can create. I'm going to show you just a few examples. These are a few examples of graphics that we have. Uh, and I don't, so many times people are out there and all they do is share everyone else's graphics and content. And they think, oh, I'm doing a great thing because I'm sharing from somebody else. Shares can be appropriate, but you need to have your own voice and you need to have your own graphics. And so you may be sitting there saying, well, Carol, this is all great, and I'm so excited that you can create your own graphics, but I don't know how to create graphics. I mean, I'm a nurse. I don't know how to create graphics either, but there are tools out there, and I can just about guarantee you that one of your staff members loves um, design. And if they don't, you can probably find somebody in your family. But anyhow, there's, it, it's so easy nowadays. The things that we use mostly is Canva, C-A-N-V-A. It's a very inexpensive tool. If you talk to your middle school, if you have children, if you talk to your middle schooler, high schooler, or your college student, they likely use Canva for a lot of their things. You can create posts in there so simply. It allows you to prepare uh, you know, anything from a Instagram post to a Facebook post to a banner for the top of your Facebook page to flyers to business cards. CVs, whatever, you can create it in there. And they have awesome uh, photographs in there and there's templates in there that just make it so super simple. So graphics is a great thing. We use Canva probably the most. We also use Uzine. We also use something called Haiku Deck, which is where I create these slides, but you can also do graphics through there. And my big warning to you though is to make sure you're not using any photographs that you find online that are copyright protected. They will come find you. And so for our recipes, I mean I've mentioned Dawn before, but she is so awesome. But she'll she'll actually create if we do recipes rather than take pictures from the internet, she'll actually create it. She'll make it at home and she'll take a picture of it in the real she's just awesome at that. Um, but at any rate, you want to be very careful about your pictures. So this is an example of some of those, that asset that I've talked about that's graphics. Here's another one. This is one of uh, Dawn's pictures here. This is, you can utilize recipes. It's a great way to educate. I, kind of, I recommend, as you're doing posts, have about 80% of them educational, and then about 20% of them can be more sales-oriented. Recipes are an awesome way to attract patients. Our Pinterest site blows up. We have so many recipes out there and people go there. It links to our website because it's optimized. People then find you, they utilize your recipes, they come explore your services or your products. It's just one of those things that is a great way to put something out there. And if you have nutritional products, if you're utilizing health-wise products in your, in your storefront, create recipes that use them. Show people how to take them and make them even better than they already are. That's going to be really helpful, but that's another way to attract people. We actually create uh, graphics every uh, Tuesday as a transformational Tuesday. If you're, you know, with your patients, you have tons of success stories out there. Always be on the looks, look out for success stories. Have somebody, it's a whole different topic to talk about, but have somebody who's 
who's the primary one, although have all your staff willing and able to request testimonials. Patients love being shown off. So we'll, uh, this is one of our patients, and we do a post like this every Tuesday on our Facebook page. It's a Transformational Tuesday page. And then what you don't want to do uh, is forget to ask people to share. When we post something, our staff gets very used to sharing it on their page, asking uh, the patient if they see it there, you know, because you have to have their consent. Obviously, we have a written consent for them to sign, but have them share it if they're willing to. So you create this one asset and it's out there. It's being shared all over the place. And it's a great way to build that engagement. Uh, we also do weigh in Wednesdays, so Dawn creates different graphics, and we'll post that every Wednesday, and it's a reminder to everyone, and it just keeps everyone out there focused on weight and our practice. And so I talked to you about assets, and I know I want to keep to our time. We're getting close here, but there's the, now the crux of the four simplified uh, steps to maximize your organic reach and attract more patients. Let's get to it. Seriously, I want you to keep it simple, but I also want you to remember, involve your staff. That helps to keep it simple so you don't have added expenses. And also be yourself. People like to see real content from real people. If you're the practitioner, they love seeing a live video in your Facebook group. Uh, it's just simple to do and um, something that you want to do. The four-step simplified process really comes down to recording a video or creating a post, like I mentioned in one of those applications, that provides value. What is it that your patients are looking for? And a lot of times people get stumped by this and they're thinking, I just can't come up with anything. Number one, if you were a member of Baradric Business Boss, I send you ideas all the time. But just think about what is it that your patients are asking for? They're asking, th what questions? I'll give you a couple of quick examples. I eat healthy, so why am I not losing weight? Is there a quick fix that I can take to lose weight? We all know there isn't, but that gives you an intro, and these are the questions people are asking. What should I look for in a weight loss program? What's my body composition? Why should I care? How can I speed up my weight loss? Uh, I exercise all the time and still don't lose weight. What's going on? My metabolism is tanked. My belly keeps getting bigger. Why is this happening? All those different things that you hear every single day in your practice are the things that you're going to use when you create your posts. You want to optimize them with keywords and hashtags. At the very minimum, make sure that you include your business name as your keyword, your practitioner's name as a keyword because people can search by that as well. And then what is it that people are searching for with regards to you know, weight loss, weight loss surgery, bariatric surgery, bariatric, um, belly fat, those are you looking and seeing what keywords people are searching for. There's a number of tools out there that will help you identify keywords as well, but oftentimes just going in there and trying some searches will give you a good idea. You also want to post on multiple sites and encourage engagement. So what we do here, just so that you, as an example, we, we might do a quick video. For example, I do this for Weight Loss Practice Builder all the time, and uh, the Tom does it all the time for the practice, but you'll you'll get a quick video, do a video, and then have somebody, we just use somebody in the office who transcribes it, and then we use it on multiple sites. The video ends up on our YouTube channel, the audio is separated out, and we use that for a podcast. It's transcribed, and then that becomes a blog. We create a graphic to go along with it, we post it out there, and we make sure that we have those housed on our website so we're always driving traffic back to the website. And it works out great. That's particularly helpful whenever you have something that is educational. You do want to include a call to action. That's what CTA is. I'm sure you likely knew that. But call to action, this is where people really get messed up. They'll post something out there, but then and people go, oh, that was great. I want more. And there's no, they have no idea how to find you. So you want to include a call to action with every single post that you make. What are some ideas? You need to tell them what to do next. People need to be told what to do next. So you can just say something as simple as, you know, reach out to me if you want more information, contact me, contact our office. You can create what we call a lead magnet, and I'll show you a few of those, where people have to, what we call opt in, give you their first name and email, and then you have them on a list that you can continually provide education and some promotion to, still following that 80-20 rule. You can provide a link to a video or webinar that you have going that helps talk about your services. Ask them to sign up, subscribe, get started, purchase here. 
put in a link to testimonials, put in a link so they can access in your office to schedule a free consult, uh, and maybe get, you know, get yourself out there as a guest speaker because you can actually inc increase your reach by being a guest speaker for local organizations. They're always looking for somebody. So we might have one thing in the form of a blog, but it's actually posted in numerous places. Pinterest, uh, for weight loss, we don't really use LinkedIn so much. I do use it for Weight Loss Practice Builder. Google, mm, kind of helpful, sometimes not. Twitter's helpful, YouTube, and then your blog and Facebook. If you are just starting out, do not do everything all at one time. What you wanna do is focus. I would start where your weight loss patients, most of them are hanging out. You'll find them on Facebook. You'll find them on YouTube, and then you'll also find them on uh, a number of them on Instagram and Twitter. Those are probably the key places where you'll find them. Here's some example of some of those lead magnets that I was talking about. We create products, we, and you can create this in Publisher. You can create it in Word, wherever you want to convert it to a PDF. Provide it as a download. You know, for us, there's a, we have a new day, new you. Uh, we have health bites that we send out to our patients every single week. We have lots of different questions that they may have, five simple steps to weight loss surgery without insurance. What is it that you want to promote? Create a asset around that and then create a graphic to promote that. Send them to a page to sign in. It, it is not a difficult process. So it's basically content, a call to action, a way for them to access what it is that you're promoting, and then they reach out to you and you build that relationship, continue to build it, focusing on how are you answering the most common questions that they have related to the service that you're providing. Helpful tools of the trade. For video capture, I recommend your phone. I'm using Zoom for this meeting. When I'm done with this meeting, Zoom will automatically save it as an MP4, which is video, and MP3, which is audio, which is great for me because I can then just take, we can replay the video, I can take the audio and turn it into a podcast. It's really, really simple, but you can use your phone just as easily and just your camera. Uh, video editing is optional. People like to see the real you. So even if there's some snafus, they typically don't mind. They can deal with a uh, video that's not so hot, but your, your audio does have to be awesome. People will not hang on and listen to things if the audio is not good. So video editing, if you're a PC user, we use Camtasia. If you're a Mac person, iMovie. It's, it has a little bit of a learning curve, both of them do, and a little bit of cost to them, but there's also free apps on your phone you can actually use for editing and a couple very nominally paid ones on your phone. For graphics, we already talked about that. For lead capture, you may be working with a webmaster for your site where you can get people to go to uh, download whatever you're uh, offering to them. If there's something that you're asking for their email in exchange for one of those lead magnets, there are some really super easy ones that you can use as well. Uh, lead pages is an easy one. Check with your CRM provider, your uh, customer relationship marketing tool, which is your email tool if you have one. Oftentimes they have lead capture uh, capability and and then also just making sure you have your social media sites and and, um, and you can actually set that up so it's automated. I actually can wake up in the morning and I can see where people opted in, where people purchase things online. Once you get these things in place, it just continues to uh, create revenue for you and to create attraction of those patients you like to work with the most. I'm a little bit over on time but pretty close. I went through that pretty quickly. I could actually talk on this topic for days, um, but tips for success, and this is really things that we've learned over the long haul and things that are important every single day to remember. But know your market and what they want and need and talk to that one person. So let's say you have you know, Mary Smith, who is, oh, you just adore working with her. She actually follows through on what you recommend. She actually has had awesome success. She takes ownership in her weight loss. Think about her. What's her age? You know, obviously she's female. What is her goal in terms of weight loss? Where does she hang out? Where, where is she online mostly? What sorts of questions did she have when she first visited your office? What sorts of things really meant the most to her with the services that you provide? Because you can promote that. Know your market, especially, and talk to that one when you're marketing out there. Try to keep it simple. 
I know I've gone down some rabbit holes, but there is a bright, shiny object syndrome out there that is so easy to fall into. You want the latest and greatest, and oftentimes people move on to the next latest and greatest thing, and they never even finish the one before. It's kind of like people in weight loss. You know, they'll go on and they'll try the latest and greatest plan, but if they had just taken the time to implement the first one, they might have had some significant success. Involve your staff. They have great ideas and they can make it super fun. It also helps your potential patients and your current patients to get to know your staff better. They love personalization. Maximize your asset distribution. So we talked about creating video, creating, and just start with one, video and graphics and blogs and articles and that sort of thing. But maximize that. We may create those, but then when we send our weekly emailers to our patients, we actually include links to those. And they can share it with other people. We always have a share button on anything we send out. But that's really helpful and important. And there's a big, there's a lot of changes going on out there. And a, there's a discussion about creating an engaged audience online versus an email list. And the jury's still out on this. I think email lists are really important, but there really is, uh, and because you have a, a group of people that you have their information, you can send them, but people get so many emails, a lot of times they don't even open them from you versus engagement online. People spend so much time online. Think about it. Do you know anybody who wakes up before they even get out of bed, they're checking their phone? I don't recommend that. I don't do that. But that's how a lot of people operate before they go to bed. It's the last thing they do. They're always searching out there. They're looking for the latest and greatest. But engaging your audience uh, versus email is, I think they're both really important. But I think that an engaged audience is actually a direction that's becoming more and more important. The other thing is, as algorithms change, it's frustrating because you'll have one thing that works today and tomorrow you swear it doesn't work at all. But having an engaged audience is really important and you're rewarded for that on any social media platform. I'm going to share with you just a really short story, but you know, last year we tried a bunch, we, we are always trying new stuff because I like to make sure that I'm up to date and that our team is up to date. So we did some paid advertising, I actually spent way more than I should have last year on some paid advertising. We also did some inexpensive Facebook ads. And then we did our organic marketing. Do you know today what I have running? All I have running is organic marketing. And we're, our seminars are more full than they have been in a long time. Now, granted, it's January and February, which is a big weight loss period. But that's important to realize. Our assets that are out there and our conversations are really helping with all that. And it just continues to uh, promote into your practice and to also increase traffic to your site and to you. You want to use your voice. Don't have, you know, a lot of times people, they'll call, they'll call and say, can you just do all my social media? But the reality is that you need to, you need to make it your voice. I'm happy, we're happy to, uh, my team here is happy, happy to help teach your team how to do it, but it really should be your voice. And then you have better control over it. And be consistent. You can't post once a month, once every other month. You have to be consistent. I post five days. We post five days a week. We always keep it consistent there. So you want to make sure that you're posting on a regular basis. That's how people start to follow you and share more. I might not have idea for, uh, time for our bonus ideas, um, but if you find something that's working really, really, really well, then you might want to create a paid ad for it, for your best posts, the ones that had the most engagement. Then create a paid ad through Facebook, and it can help benefit you in that way. You may want to update your business card. Once you write a lot of content, or um, you know, sometimes people contact me, I do help write content for people, but you can actually turn it into a book. I love publishing, and this is one that we use. So when people leave your office, uh, or it's a great giveaway if you're out doing a, a talk somewhere or if, whenever they leave your office, they leave with one of your books. It's the best marketing ever because they share it with other people. They also um, will review it. It's not like a, something they're going to throw away. So it's a great thing. So I went through that pretty quickly, I know. Um, and I wanted to know if there's any questions out there. I know that was quick, but really... It's creating those assets. It's doing it in a simple manner. It's getting them out there to your audience where they are. And it's really promoting these things that are, that are not high cost. Does anyone have any questions? Because I wanted to try to, here we are at almost 1240. Usually we have a bunch of questions.
none at the moment. I'm going to show you, let's see. If you, go, like I say, if you go to uh, centerforcfws.com, you can see a lot of these things I've talked about in action. I'd love to have you share if there's something that you're doing that's particularly working really well. I think we're here to help each other. There certainly are plenty of patients to go around. So um, making sure that we're not comparing ourselves too much and making sure that we're actually, you know, helping each other is really important. Can you speak to uh, use of contests and giveaways to get people to share with their friends? Sure. Uh, that's actually a great idea. It's a great way to get some, some interaction. Sometimes we'll post something and we will, uh, a well, couple things. Sometimes we ask people uh, to, we'll give them a, uh, some sort of a benefit if they check in when they get to our, our uh, place of business online. So people see that they went there. So that helps build that. We'll do contests. I know we've had different ones. Like we had, uh, as you came in, take a selfie with Dr. Clark and post it out there and we gave them a specific hashtag to put and see if people could find it from there. That was a great one. We also uh, have done some contests where we'll just tell people to share a particular post and of those that share the post, we'll give them a free book or we'll give them a free resource or we'll give them a, that's a great thing about having a nutritional store, you can give them a gift certificate there or if you think, oh my gosh, it's gonna be too expensive, have, have them do as many and then tell them that you're going to do a drawing and pick five people that are going to get that. So those are some great ways to engage them and help them share. Uh, and always ask for the share. Sometimes people are afraid to ask, but they don't, they're not thinking about it. But if they love you and your services and they've had great results, most people are so willing to share. Please clarify how you get the high rankings. How you get the higher rankings is a couple things. One is it's not immediate. So you do need to have some sort of patience. So the way we get the high rankings is to create assets, content, whether it's video, blogs, uh, or audio, and create those on a regular basis and to put them out there with the appropriate uh, keywords. And your keywords should always include, like I mentioned, your practice name, your practitioner's name, and keywords that people are searching for so that you're going to show up higher in the rankings. And once you get that out there and you actually have, and then promote those videos or those posts in your emails that you're sending out perhaps each week to your um, clientele, because they'll actually go to those and the more that they are viewed and the more that they're commenting on them, then the higher your rankings are going to be. So, and like I say, once you get it out there and you link it back to your website, you create those backlinks, uh, that improves your search engine optimization. And a lot of times there's discussion that maybe that doesn't work anymore. I, I personally have found that it works really well. I mean, we have assets from years ago that still show up high in the rankings. So a lot of it's related to your keywords and then just making sure that you're getting things out there in a consistent manner. How do you coordinate all social media when it comes to a post and making sure Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, will have all that information? That's a good question. And so this is where a lot of people want to use an outside source. We, um, we used to do it. I used to do it all myself and my husband used to do it himself. And I can just tell you from, just so you know, years ago, he didn't even want to touch the computer. And I know, you know, it's certainly have to take care of that, but he now will do a quick live video and he will post it. He doesn't have it. He can video edit. He just kind of taught himself. It's not as difficult as what people think. But the way we coordinate it, we used to have these very elaborate uh, editorial calendars. In fact, I used to teach, create an editorial calendar. Now, um, what we do is we just kind of look one month out. We used to look three months or longer out. We just look at one month. We look at what's going on in the store, what are our patients asking, and then we utilize, I have actually a staff member who was willing to go to get the training. She also has a great eye for, um, it's Dawn, she has a great eye for uh, design. And I bet you have somebody too. So we just, she takes a portion of her, she also does coaching with our patients. She also runs our fitness center. So she's also a personal trainer. So she has lots of different roles. But this one role, we carved out a little bit of time each week. She creates everything we created. She'll pretty it all up. And then she schedules it to go out. So she really takes ownership for that with just a few hours a week. And that's how we then get it out there. And, um, and if we need to alter her time because we're having a big promotion or we need to increase our reach or something like that, or we're working on an ad campaign within Facebook, then she modifies her hours in order to be able to accommodate that. 
So that's uh, one of the things. And the great thing is there's tons of tools out there. If anyone needs help training their staff, I mean, that's one of the services we can provide. But um, you want to have your staff trained and you want to have them out there uh, being able to promote you. And you want to be able to do it at a drop of a hat. So if you have somebody who comes in and they just hit their 100 pound mark and they're open to having somebody pull out their phone and grab a quick video of it, it's, it's real time. You get it out there, it's the most awesome thing ever. People are so excited to see that. So you need to be able to do social media planned, and then you also need to do social media sort of on the fly if you want to really improve that engagement. Because a lot of times those on-the-fly posts are the ones that get the most engagement. Any other questions out there? I hope I answered that adequately for you, Ron and Karen. All right, uh, free resources for you, HealthWise has some resources on their site specific to this, healthwisenri.com, I do as well, weightlosspracticebuilder.com. Um, if you, here's like, remember I said you can't end something without having a call to action. I would not be very good if I wasn't following through on my own advice. If you need some help, reach out to me, Carol, at weightlosspracticebuilder.com. If you, um, I also have books on social media, which include a lot of information about marketing in general. It has whole marketing chapters in there. Feel free to pick those up if you want. If you haven't joined Bariatric Business Boss, that's another way to be, get some of these resources on a weekly basis, trainings and one-on-one -on -one coaching and resources to use in your practice. Uh, so it's just bari bariatricbusinessboss.com or weightlosspracticebuilder.com and you can click on it at the top. And those that's what I have for today. I'm kind of sad. This is the third week. This is the last week we actually have something scheduled. It's been really fun uh, getting to talk with a lot of you online and then also um, via email as we've been going back and forth. And really appreciate HealthWise bringing this to you. And if no one has any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and end the recording. Any other last minute questions? Well, thank you. You're most welcome. I hope this was helpful for people and, uh, and go out there and get them. Get your, get your practice out there. Take advantage of free advertising. All right. You're welcome. Okay, you guys. Have an awesome day. Get back. I know you're getting back to patients. And, uh, and I appreciate the time that you took out of your schedule to, uh, to join us here today. Have a good day. Bye.